What is going on everybody? Today we're going to analyze the Las Vegas Raiders offensive line and really analyze the performance that they had. You know, they had the second best pass blocking unit, pass blocking win rate this past week. And against the run, they're the 12th best offensive line. Those are stats measured by ESPN. We were ranked as one of the best offensive lines this past week. And when you watch the tape, you can definitely see why that was. You can definitely see why the Raiders were ranked so highly. Now, it wasn't all positive. In fact, Josh Jacobs had a number of runs that were like two yards or less. And I want to actually start right there. I want to show you guys two plays in which on the very first drive, the Raiders gained basically nothing on. Uh, this is the first one here. You're going to only pick up a yard. Uh, within this play, there's two missed blocks, but I think the big one was really going to be on the right guard, Greg Van Roten. To me, he's the one that ends up missing this block. So within this play, it is an ISO, which means Munford's going to block the defensive end. You're going to get a double team here by the center right guard, and Roten has to get up to number 49 here. And of course, you're going to ISO with the fullback on number 47, and the right tackle just blocks down 92, whichever way he wants to go. So if you guys watch the right guard here, the right guard's going to double team, but he doesn't get off the block and he doesn't get up to number 49. And number 49 is going to be the guy to make the play. Now, the other guy that ends up making the play is number 47, the other linebacker, and he's the ISO man within this play. And Johnson actually misses the block on 47, as you guys see right there. But to me, the block missed on 47 is not the big one. The big one is the right guard row in not getting up to 49. And I will say this. I think, although he should have gotten off and gotten up to the block, there's not much he could do. You know, the right tackle crushes this defensive tackle down. You can see how bad of a spot the D tackle is in. And he's actually going to get pushed right back into the guard. So the guard actually cannot get off the block here. and He can't get up to the second level defender. And this kind of happened a number of times with certain guys that are missing blocks. I'm going to show you guys this second play here, where it's very similar once again. This time it's going to be the tight end. That actually ends up not doing a good job. This play only picked up one yard. This was first and 10 here. Um, and let's, let's kind of talk about it a little bit. So you got a defensive end here who the tight end is coming back to block. So within this play, the play should bounce to the inside of the tight end. But if you guys watch the tight end here, watch how badly the tight end gets beat by the defensive end. He gets lifted up and he gets absolutely moved within this play. And to me, you can't have that happen. And even more so than that, Michael Mayer not only gets lifted up and pushed backwards, but then he's going to get pushed right into the fullback. And this ruins the fullback's block. So to me, that's just a really, really bad job by the tight end. And then at the end of it, he's going to end up holding. Luckily, the hold does not get called right there. Again, you can't have that. Now, it's not a big deal because I think as the game continued, the Raiders definitely had some better runs. And you're able to see that on tape. And we're going to definitely get into those plays as we kind of continue through this. But I did want to just start with those two negative plays before we get into some of the positive stuff. So the Las Vegas Raiders were ranked as the second best offensive line in pass blocking by ESPN. Among 32 NFL teams, they were ranked the second best. It was plays like this. To me, this is just a beautiful, beautiful job by the entire offensive line. Keep in mind, this was third and seven. Uh, this was the play in which Garoppolo ended up getting hit helm in his helmet. We got the 15-yard penalty. He did come off the off the field for a couple of plays. But you can just see how clean of a pocket this is. You know, when I watched the Las Vegas Raiders offensive line last year, you noticed how good our tackles were. Both Jermaine Illuminor and Colt Miller did a really, really solid job. And it's already kind of continuing so far. Right, we're already seeing them do a really nice job, right? You don't get this type of time in the NFL. This is a very, very clean pocket. And for a quarterback, I mean, it does not get better than this, the type of pocket that these guys have created. And I think a big part of this is also the fact that both the right guard and right tackle for the Raiders are a very good set of offensive linemen. I mean, Dylan Parham does a great job here, really anchoring down against the bull rush. Really does a nice job shutting down that defensive tackle. Even Colton Miller does a really nice job as he gets out of his stance going up against Frank Clark. That's just a really, really nice job by the entire offensive line. Garoppolo doesn't see anyone, so he's able to kind of roll out of there and pick up eight yards. He does convert the first down. It's just a really, really nice job. All right, guys, very next play here. Only a gain of two yards. This is first and five. Keep in mind from the five-yard line, the backup quarterback's going to come in. They're going to run this out of a gun formation. 
to the left of your screen and you guys can see that number 49 is going to go unblocked uh, number 49 is the linebacker here no one's going to pick him up and within this play if if that one guy gets picked up you can almost make the argument that this play could have popped for a touchdown right based off the blocks parm if he's able to just kind of cut this guy off which he does josh can kick this to the inside possibly now the guy that makes the mistake within this play is going to be the tight end michael mayer a mayor here has a double team block on number 91 but as he double teams he has to recognize when to get off the double team now they do a great job moving number 91 right and that's great but you got to get off the block and you got to pick up the second level defender within this play the way this play works is that Dylan Parham's going to pull out to the left here, which means Andre James is going to cover his gap. Roten is going to cover the nose. Illuminor is going to take on number 91. And it's up to Mayer to double on 91, get off the block, and take on the backside linebacker. Of course, with that, Colt Miller is just going to set up to the inside and really just stop anything from the backside. But Michael Mayer has to process this a little bit better. It's a great job getting number 91 out of there. But get off the block. At this point, take on number 49. As Parm sets up to the inside here, Josh Jacobs has a walk-in touchdown. Again, it doesn't matter because we scored anyways, but I did want to just point it out to you guys. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. All right, you guys, check this out. The Raiders are going to run ISO once again. Uh, this time it's out of the gun formation, so it's going to look a little bit different, but it is still the same exact concept. And you guys can see it. It works. This time they pick up five yards. I want to give a shout out here to Andre James. Andre James is going to do a great job now. Uh, one of the things, if you guys noticed that we've already discussed with these ISO concepts, is if the play is running to the left of the center, you're going to get a double team here by the center and right guard. And the right guard is supposed to get up to the inside linebacker here, right? It's a double from the nose to the backside linebacker. But there's one exception to that. That is if the linebacker jumps the gap here, then it's actually Andre James that would get off of him and the right guard would just stick on the nose here. But that's something that these guys have to be able to process together. And in this instance, 47 does jump the gap. And Andre James does get off the block and he picks up number 47. And without him picking up 47, 47 makes the play in the backfield here. But because of the fact that you see Andre James do a great job within this play, the running back is able to pick up about four to five yards. Um, I would like to see Dylan Parham do just a little bit of a better job on this one. If you guys watch Parham, he's going to have an out block on the five technique defensive tackle. He doesn't hold the block long enough. You know, if he's able to really set himself up back to the inside, I think the running back has a little bit more here. If he's able to break through the arm tackles of number 99, possibly not a big deal, right? Still a gain of about four to five yards. Just wanted to point that one out. Let's get into the next rep. So one of the things that ruins power runs is guys blitzing. You know, someone's assigned here to number 30 based off pre-snap alignment. And if this guy jumps the gap, it makes it very hard. And what I mean by that, and you guys will see it here, is number 16, Jacoby Myers, is responsible for number 30. Myers has to get to number 30. And within this play, the defensive back jumps the gap. Now, Josh does a great job avoiding that. Myers does a great job trying to just get there as much as he can. And the play actually pops here for about six to seven yards. But sometimes when guys blitz, it really impacts the Raiders scheme. And, you know, I, I do like the Raiders run scheme, but I would love to see us run more zone based runs as opposed to being so gap heavy. For example, Josh Shake was running the power run 15 times this past week as opposed to only zone three times. So to me, I would like to see that a little bit more evenly split. Uh, this play obviously still popped. Great job by the offensive lineman. You guys can see uh, Dylan Parm, Andre James do a great job on the nose tackle here. Absolutely crush him, put him down. Really allows that lane to kind of develop right there. So that's a nice job. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. Alrighty, guys. Raiders are in a jumbo package with their Munford in on the left side of you guys' screen. Uh, sixth offensive lineman. This one right here hits for 21 yards. You know, it's interesting because the Raiders ran this six offensive lineman set 13, 14 times this past week. And I feel like that's a lot to bring in that extra offensive lineman. But it does make sense because it does allow you to get bigger, allows you to be heavier up front. And it definitely forces the defense to have to play slower, right? Because they have to account for that now. They may have to bring in an extra linebacker. They may have to bring in an extra defensive lineman in order to counter this sixth offensive lineman look. And for the Raiders, that could benefit you a little bit. 
right? Because not only do you keep the quarterback clean because all day to get this ball out, but we have guys that are good route runners, guys that can kind of separate and beat guys one-on-one, right? Michael Mayer, Jacoby Myers, Hunter Renfro, Devontae Adams. These guys can all separate. And one of those guys has to be in a single situation, right? What I mean by that is on this one, you got Jacoby Myers, who he's going to be basically in a one-on-one situation with the cornerback, and he crushes him on the circuit route. And it's different with Devontae Adams, right? Devontae Adams is at the top of your screen. He has guys that are kind of going to bracket him and kind of in the, or in and around where he's kind of at. And to me, it's a little bit different with an Adams as opposed to a Myers. But both guys are able to naturally separate, right? So if you keep the quarterback clean, those guys should be able to get up and downfield. And the Raiders found a little bit of success with it early on. All right, you guys, we're going to have a toss play to the right here. Jacoby Myers has a down block on number 42. He's going to do a really, really terrible job actually making this block. You guys can see he's going to just flat out miss. 42 is going to spin by him and blow the entire play up. You can't have this, man. This is the type of stuff that, you know, third and ones, fourth and ones, you run these crack toss plays towards the outside where if your, if your wide receiver makes the block, you're going to score, you're going to pick up the first, you're going to get the positive yards that you need. If he doesn't, this is going to be the outcome. This play right here could have worked. The Raiders had the numbers. If 42 was blocked off by Jacoby Myers here, Quint Miller's already taking this guy and pushing him out this way. You have a fullback leading. The cutback lane would have opened up. If it's not the cutback, he could have hit it to the front side, depending on what either one of these two guys kind of does. But the Raiders had the numbers on their side, right? Play probably would have scored a touchdown. Jacoby Myers has to make his block. You can't miss this block. I'm sure the coaching staff's already talked to him about it. But, you know, sometimes it's like the little details that really matter in football. And if you don't get it right, you're going to lose a yard or two or only pick up, in this case, two yards. You know, it's part of why the Raiders did not have a lot of success running the football because it plays like this, right? And, of course, I want to point it out because I think it's important for us to clean it up going up against the, going into this Bills game. Also, do keep in mind the Bronx have a pretty good defense. Right. Obviously, we don't know if it's a top tier defense. We'll find that out in the next five weeks if they continue to have success or not. In my opinion, the Raiders pass blocking was damn impressive. And it's really just the individual guys, man. They they really just know what it is that they're doing. You know, on this one here, the quarterback had the, the opportunity to throw a touchdown pass. The ball here actually hits the wide receiver in the hands. The wide receiver is just not able to hold it. But just look at the pocket. This is such a nice, clean pocket. And it really starts right here with Quentin Miller. Miller's going to send this defensive end into a completely different time zone. Look at that. Bam. Absolutely throws him. And then he gets back around to the defensive tackle. And he picks off the defensive tackle, as you guys see there. That's a really, really nice rep. But even more so than that, you guys can watch from the center over to the right tackle here. Those three guys handled those two guys. Yeah, it's easier. Three versus two. But we have, we've seen situations where three offensive linemen don't pick up the two guys properly. We've seen it, right? But in this instance, the Raiders really keep Jimmy G clean. And I think the way for the Las Vegas Raiders to win this season, it's going to be to keep this guy clean. The cleaner Jimmy G is, the more success the Raiders will have. But when it came to pass pro, they did a really, really nice job this past week. Check this play out. The Raiders are going to pick up four yards. Watch the left guard here. He's going to pull towards the left of your screen. Does a great job running through the gap and picking off the linebacker. Just a really, really nice job once again. Dylan Parham, I think, has taken that second year leap. Although I'll wait to crown him as an all-pro type caliber player, we'll give him a couple more weeks to really prove it, but the guy looked very, very, very impressive in my opinion. He looked very good this past week, and I wanted to see him continue to do some of what we know he can do. Right, Just have him continue to develop and continue to get better. And as he continues that, I think the guy's going to have a lot of upside as he continues over the course of his career. One of the tough things to really figure out is when every single one of these gaps is, is covered, who's blocking who? Who's coming? Who's not coming? It's a hard task for offensive linemen, but the Raiders pick it up. This one's third and 12. They're able to pick it up. They're able to keep the quarterback clean, and Jimmy G's going to deliver a pass downfield. Great job by Colton Miller here if you guys watch him. This guy's actually going to run a game with number 99. And watch Miller quickly get back into number 99. And then Parham's going to try shifting his body as much as he can to get in front of the defensive end. And Garoppolo does not actually get hit. 
by the defensive players. He's going to actually get Dylan Parham, who kind of runs into him. Uh, but I'll take that. You know, you keep the quarterback clean by p- picking up and passing off that defensive line game. On the other end, Andre James, the ta- the guard and the tackle here are going to pick up the other two guys. Obviously, as you guys see, both linebackers do drop off. Andre James keeps his head up. He sees the defensive line game, picks it up. Just a really, really nice job by the offensive lineman there. Watch Josh Jacobs on this one right here. Really nice job stepping in there. Picking up the linebacker that's blitzing allows Jimmy G to step up and deliver a really, really nice 12-yard pass downfield. Just a great job right there by Jacobs. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Now, this is a pretty nice run. This one's going to pick up six yards. I Keep in mind, this was the final drive that the Raiders had the ball. Uh, this was the drive in which we basically just ran the clock out. Uh, this one was a six-yard run here. Uh, but I do want to state this, you know, one of the things that I think is visibly noticeable is our tight ends this season are much weaker when it comes to run blocking. In this one, Austin Hooper is not going to do a good job on the defensive end. Uh, he's going to really just get pushed back and we can't have this. You know, when you're blocking out and you set your body up to the inside the way he does within this play, you need to hold your ground. And if anything, as you make contact here, you need to push this guy further out towards the left because Dylan Palm is going to go right through this gap and he wants to pick off number 47 and to me when these plays are going to hit they're only going to hit based off that tight end there right and in this play specifically you guys can see it that the tight end really doesn't do a good job holding the block he's going to give up ground and that's going to ultimately close the gap and this defensive end gets off the block and he's going to tackle the running back now the running back does a great job carrying him for about four extra yards but to me it is very clear our tight ends are not as good this year as they were last year when it came through unblocking i think foster Moreau may have been a big part of it last year this year we don't have that type of blocker anymore austin hooper is an okay run blocker not bad but he's really not that good michael mayer is not bad but he's really not that good either and i think our run game is so reliant on receivers on uh, tight ends on fullbacks to make their blocks like for example on this play here uh, Jacoby Myers is going to get up to the safety and he's going to try picking off the safety right this right here if Josh Jacobs gets past the first and second levels this block right here is going to allow him to score a touchdown possibly right so our offensive scheme is so reliant on some of these guys and for Austin Hooper, Michael Mayer, they got to do a better job. I'm sure they'll get better as we continue. And I have no doubt in my mind they'll get better as we continue, right? Because we have seen good plays. This one right here by Michael Mayer looks like a pretty nice block to me. He sets himself to the inside, does a good job making contact and driving the defensive end here. He drives him back like four or five yards. So there's definitely flashes. There's definitely hope. Uh, keep in mind this one right here was a first and 10. This was also a big part of the Raiders actually... Uh, picking that first down up that we needed, right? That first down that really ultimately helped us win the game. And the final play we're going to analyze here is the third and seven. I want you guys to watch Josh Jacobs first. Great job picking it up. Great, great, great job right there. It does not get better than that if you're Josh Jacobs. Uh, this was part of what I needed him to improve on from last year to this year. And it looks like he's definitely done that. Great job picking it up offensive line does a great job as well if you guys missed it watch the left tackle and watch the left guard watch these two guys swap their assignments right they're going to process the defensive line game uh, and it's not a defensive line game it's actually the linebacker here coming on a fire blitz uh, same the same concept right you're still passing it off the way you see it here just a really really nice job by the offensive line to keep the quarterback clean allows him to run through there to me, I think the Raiders offensive line looks like a top 7 to 10 unit right now, right? Especially in pass pro. Obviously, run blocking, they'll have to continue to get better. But in pass pro, they look very, very good. And I'm very impressed with this squad so far. But the big thing will be how they kind of continue to go, especially as they play some of these, uh, you know, heavy defenses. Some of the better defensive lines, right? Some of the better secondaries. How will the Raiders be able to have success against some of those teams, right? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely wanted to just give you guys my thoughts and opinions and just go over the tape with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.